Hello students, welcome to Learner's Planet. Students, in the previous grade, we studied about fiber to fabric. And we learned about clothes, the importance of clothes. And also about fiber and fabric in detail. And most probably, we did plant fibers. So, in today's session, we will learn about the introduction to fiber and fabric and also something about animal fibers. So students, let us start with this session with the importance of clothes. Yes students, have you ever gave a thought that clothes are important to us? Why are they important for us? Yes, clothes are important as food and shelter. We use them for covering, protecting and even decorating ourselves. We must be having different types of clothes for different occasions like our casual attire, office wear, party dresses, our night suit and so on. All of these clothes are made up of many different types of materials called fabrics. So today in the market so many types of fabrics are available. Do you know what these fabrics are made of? How do they come in so many different varieties? Why do some fabrics shine more than the others? Have you ever gave a thought? Yes, because some fabrics are light in weight while others are heavy. Some are more lustrous and some are less. And that is why in today's session we will discuss about it. So basically what we can say, what is meant by a fabric? A fabric is any piece of cloth and the study of all the aspects of a fabric is called fabric science which explains the behavior of a fabric under different conditions. Behavior that doesn't mean that it is related to a living thing but it is all about the materials which are used to make different types of cloths. So now you must have realized that different fabrics are not only different in their appearance but also in their properties, their uses and their care procedures. For example, silk is smooth and shiny but cotton is smooth and dull. Whereas wool is rough. Wool keeps us warm and cotton is cool to wear. That is why we wear it in summer season and we wear woolen clothes in winter season. Cotton can be washed easily but it needs to be ironed after washing for a neat look. For example nylon and polyester they are also washed very easily and they need almost no ironing after washing. For example silk again Silk is either dry, cleaned or washed with special soaps. These and many more concepts of fabrics are explained in fabric science. What we are going to study. The market today is flooded with a variety of fabrics in all the types of colors, textures and designs. They all vary in their price range as well. So to be an intelligent consumer and exposure to fabric science is very much important for us. It is very much important because it helps us to understand a fabric in a better way. Have you ever wondered what makes a fabric? Yes, if we pull out a thread from a fabric and then if we open it out, what we can find? Yes, we can find that this thread is made up of small hair-like strands and the single hair-like strand is called a fiber. In other words, the basic unit of a fabric is a fiber. 
So let us start with this session and learn more about fiber and fabric. So students, there are some fibers which are obtained from plants. Now, what is the first thing that comes to your mind when you think of cloths? Some of you may think it of a fashion. Some may think about colors. Some may think about tailors. Some would say designers. But very few might say fabrics. But fabrics is the basis of cloths. What we are wearing. Fabric or clothing material refers to a material that is woven from fibers and is used for making dresses, curtains, carpets, bed sheets, etc. But where do we get these fibers from? We already know about the types of fabrics, right? Natural fabrics, synthetic fabrics and blended fabrics. There are some type of fibers like plant fibers and animal fibers which are considered to be the natural fabrics. So do we obtain fibers from animals? Yes, as we obtain it from plants, we also, we do obtain from animals also. So do you remember the names of the fibers that are obtained from plants and animals that we studied? Well, if you don't, then don't worry. Cotton and jute are the examples of plant fibers. Silk, wool are the examples of animal fibers. However, these fibers are more useful when they are converted into fabrics. Right? So we have learned that wool and silk fibers are obtained from animals. Wool is obtained from the fleece that is also called as hair of certain animals like sheep, yak, etc. Silk fibers are obtained from cocoons of the silk moth. So there are different animals from which we can obtain different types of fibers. So basically we can say that fibers are obtained from plants as well as from animals. But in this session we will concentrate on the fibers which are obtained from animals. So the first animal fiber which we are going to discuss is wool. Yes, students, wool is obtained from sheep, goat, yak and some other animals too. These wool yielding animals bear hair on their body. These animals have a thick coat of hair. And one major property of such animals or the hair of such animals is that the hair traps a lot of air in the spaces between them. So we can say that since the air is present, since the air is there in the spaces between them, it does not allow the heat of the body to escape. And that is why the body of such animals are warm. So we can say that it is an animal fiber. It is actually the hair on the body of certain animals. And these animals have a thick coat of hair which traps the air in the spaces between them. And what is the advantage of having spaces between them? Yes, it is because the air does not allow the heat of the body to escape and that is why the body is kept warm. Now you know why we wear woolen clothes in winter season. Right? Okay. So, do you know that which part of the sheep's body yields fibers? Are you aware? that how these fibers are converted into the woolen yarn that we buy from the market to knit sweaters. Do you have any idea how silk fibers are made into silk which is woven into saris and other materials too? 
No? Let us study about it. Yes. Wool is the dense worn coat of sheep, also called a fleece. Right? The hair of sheep has many unique properties that make it well suited to textile production and something that humans realized approximately around that is 8000 BC before Christ when sheep first began to be domesticated. Wool is used in a variety of textiles and it can be found woven or knitted. So basically we can say that wool comes from these animals like sheep, goat, yak, etc. So basically the hair which is present in them, it keeps these animals warm because hair traps a lot of air and air is a poor conductor of heat. It does not allow the heat to pass. And so we can say that wool is derived from these hairy fibers. Now, let us see that how can we obtain wool from one such animal which was first domesticated? Yes sheep. So let us now study about wool from sheep. Here students, the hairy coat of the sheep has two types of fibers. First is the coarse beard hair and second is the soft under hair that is found close to the skin. So basically they have two types of hair and it is this soft under hair that is used to make wool. So there are certain breeds of sheep that have been developed by the scientists that have only the soft under hair. So what we can say? The most interesting thing about wool is that sheep didn't always have wool or not enough to notice. When people first started hunting sheep, they hunted them for their meat. Sheep hair was more like deer hair, like deer hair is today, short and thick, not long and fine and curly. So it was like goat hair and deer hair. Sometime, not too much later, people also began to make plots instead of just wearing furs or just hunting them for their meat. Since they had sheep skins around, one of the fibers they used was sheep hair in ancient time. And then they noticed that although none of the sheep hair was really any good for spinning because it was too thick and brittle. So because of this property of being too thick and brittle, some of the hair from the stomach, the underside of the sheep was better than the rest one. That means the coarse beard hair. So people began breeding the sheep that had the most good hair together, trying to get some hair which they could spin. So it took thousands of years and many many generations of sheep but by about 5000 BC before Christ people could begin to spin wool. That is how it came into existence. So basically, finally, there are many varieties of sheep that provide us wool now differing in their fineness shine, length and strength and so the finest wool is obtained from the merino, a breed of sheep originally obtained from Spain and wool, this wool which is obtained from merino is very very soft and light and is therefore used in producing the finest woolen cloths. 
Now you will be very amazed to know that approximately 90% of the world's sheep produce wool. One sheep produces anywhere from 2 to 30 pounds of wool annually in international countries. The wool from one sheep is called a fleece. What it is called as? Their hair, which we discussed. Yes, it is called a fleece. And if it is obtained from many sheep, then it is called a clip. So always remember this, that the wool obtained from one sheep is called a fleece. And if it is obtained from many sheep, sorry, from many sheep, that means it is called as a clip. So the amount of wool that a sheep produces depends upon its breed, depends upon its nutrition and shearing into it. So lambs produce less wool than mature animals because due to their larger size rams which usually produce more wool than the others than the lambs of the same breed or type even long wool sheep usually produce the heaviest fleeces because their fibers though they are coarser grow the longest even the hen spinners tend to prefer wool from the long wool breeds because it is easier to spin there is medium wool sheep which raised more for meat or which was raised more for meat than fiber and it produced the lightest weight and the least valuable fleeces so Medium wool is usually made into blankets, sweaters or socks, etc. There are some sheep that produce very coarse fibers and this type of wool is called a carpet wool as the name suggests that it is used to make carpets and tapestries. Even there is a fine wool sheep which produce fleeces which usually have the greatest value due to their smaller fiber diameter and versatility of use. And that is why garments are made from this fine wool which are less likely to itch. There is also one more hair sheep. There is a hair sheep that sheds their their coats and produce no usable fibers and the fleeces from hair sheep and hair crosses hair into wool crosses should be discarded and that is why their inclusion in the wool clip contaminates the entire clip even raising wool sheep alongside side hair sheep or other shedding animals could affect fleece quality of the wool sheep and that is why this hair sheep the hair sheep is breeded or reared less than others because their hair does not accept any dye so this was about the wool which is obtained from sheep the different types of wool obtained from different types of sheep right so we discussed about wool from sheep now let us see that how sheep are reared so now let us study about rearing of sheep first of all we should be familiar with the term rearing what is meant by rearing students Yes, rearing means to keep animals in a farm and taking care of them for their uses. Now, we are discussing about rearing of sheep. So, we must know that what is sheep? As we are already, as we already know that sheep are herbivores. 
and herbivores means? Yes, they are the animals that feed on grass and leaves. So what we can say? That sheep are herbivores and they feed on grass and leaves. You might have seen herds of sheep grazing in the fields of many parts of India and abroad. So, you might have observed them that they are feeding on grass and leaves. But, apart from grazing sheep, rarers feed them a mixture of pulses, corn, jowar, oil cakes and minerals. So, why do they feed them with a mixture of all these things? Yes, it makes it nutritious for them. So, if they rear better, they can produce better. So, if you travel to the hills in Jammu and Kashmir or Uttaranchal or Himachal Pradesh, Arunachal Pradesh and Sikkim or the plains of Haryana, Punjab, Rajasthan and Gujarat, you can see shepherds taking their herds of sheep for grazing and they feed them with this mixture too. Now you know about pulses, corn, jowar and minerals. But what are the oil cakes? Yes, oil cakes are the materials which are left after taking out oil from seeds, from seeds of certain plants. Right, so oil cakes are the materials which are left after taking out oil from the seeds and that is why they are nutritious for the sheep. That is why the rarers feed them with a mixture of all these things with oil cakes. So in winter, sheep are kept indoors and they are fed on leaves, grain and dry fodder. Right, so here you can see a picture of rearing of sheep. So sheep are reared in many parts of our country for wool. And so, there are some Indian breeds of sheep and they are as follows. So here is a table by which you can come to know about the name of the breed and what quality, what type of quality of wool is obtained from these breeds and in which state they are found. So the name of the breed, the first one is Bakharwal. Bakharwal is the name of the breed of one such sheep whose woolen shawls are very much famous. The quality of wool of Bakharwal is so great that it is used in making woolen shawls which is found in Jammu and Kashmir. Secondly, Patanwadi. Patanwadi is used for Hoysiri, which is found in Gujarat. Thirdly, Rampur Busher, which is famous for its brown fleece and it is found in Uttar Pradesh and Himachal Pradesh. Same way, Lohi, it has also a good quality of wool, which is found in Rajasthan and Punjab. Even Marwari, Marwari is the quality of wool obtained from this type of breed is coarse wool which is found in Gujarat. And lastly, it's Nali. Nali is found in Rajasthan, Haryana, Punjab and it is famous for the carpet wool. It is used in making carpets and tapestries. Right, so this table gives us a list of Indian breeds of sheep and their quality of wool and the state in which they are found. 
So around the world, sheep are reared in countries ranging from hot desert regions of Australia, Asia, and the Middle East to the cold countries of Northern Europe, Russia, Iceland, and Southern South America. So it is not just the India, it is sheep are also reared for many purposes, for various purposes outside India too. So basically we can say that the quality and texture of the fibers obtained from them are of different types. Certain breeds of sheep have thick coat of hair on their body which yields good quality wool in large quantities like lohi as mentioned as we mentioned earlier and these sheep are selectively bred with one parent being a sheep of good breed and that is why we obtain a good quality of wool from them and once the rare sheep have developed a thick growth of hair, hair is shaved off for getting wool. So we can say that sheep can be reared as free range. Free range means where there is no shortage of land or under housing inside a shed. So it is a very important component in dry land farming system. That means with very low investments can be made into a profitable venture for small marginal farmers and even it is good for landless laborers. You will be very amazed to know that the best wool comes from the International Wool Secretariat which is shortly called as IWS. So the member countries the best wool comes from this IWS member countries like Australia, New Zealand, South Africa and Uruguay. So this is the symbol or we can say a logo of IWS and this is the building of IWS. So what it does basically? Yes, the best wool is obtained from IWS member countries. So, you, are, you enjoyed this session learning about rearing of wool, right? So, there are other breeds too, other than Indian breeds. There are local breeds varies, which varies according to the region. There are exotic breeds and there is Merino, which we discussed earlier for the wool purpose it is used. There is Ram Bowlet sheep which is used for its wool and which is reared for its wool and meat. There is one more chaviot which is reared for its meat and south down which is reared for its meat. So there are certain breeds which are reared for wool purpose or for meat purpose. So sheep with its multifaceted utility for wool, meat, milk, skins and manure form an important component of rural economy, particularly in the arid, semi-arid and mountainous areas of the country. So it provides a dependable source of income to the shepherds through sale of wool and animals. So this was all about the rearing of wool. So I hope that you enjoyed today's session and learn something about wool. Right, so we will discuss about wool in detail in the next session. Till then, keep learning, keep enjoying.